All right, we're back. All right, awesome. Okay, so welcome to Table of Contents, episode six. I'm with my beloved host, NYC underscore KB, Kenny Bulwark. Thanks, everyone, for having us. And we got Don Crumble Pizza Guy here, another podcast. How you doing? <laughs> First thing we're going to start off right off the bat, welcome back to the show, everybody. If you haven't been watching, we have a lot of the episodes on YouTube, the full edition. So if you've been watching a couple of snippets that we post on Instagram, watch the full edition on YouTube. And hopefully we're going to get everything on the page here soon, too. Amen. Once we get the camera clear for every every video, but most of the audios have been great. Well, let's go over the first thing. It was which, uh, this New York restaurant in the West Village, an exclusive West Village restaurant. I don't know if you ever heard of it, where Jeff Bezos has dined, dropped its notorious no photo policy. Thoughts on uh, the no photo policy being dropped. So well, now you can take pictures. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, if, if that dude who's, who's a billionaire and doesn't, you know, goes there, maybe it's for an exclusivity aspect. Maybe, maybe not. But um, but you got to take pictures. It, it's like it's, you know, it's internet time. It's you know everything's uh, on social media. You have to take pictures. What are you doing? I mean, I haven't even heard of the place. I guess that's their their marketing. We should do that. Our no photo policy at Filomena's has now been released. <laughs> yeah, I was like, ah, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> Kermit says photos are now allowed at Frog Club. I didn't even heard of Frog Club. Frog Club. Then he has a list of here, 10 ways to get kicked out. This buzzy new <laughs> restaurant has 10 rules for diners, including a ban on bathroom selfies and pretending it's your birthday. So number one, no call, no showing for a reservation. How'd you feel about that when you worked in the industry? Oh man, that was such a pain in the neck. You know, like you would have, uh, you know, like party of six or whatever. They would just have, a, they would never show up. Um, How much grace period would you give to a, a to people that are late? Because New York, you know, the subway, fifteen traffic, minutes. You know, like fifteen right? minutes. If you don't reach out by fifteen minutes, then then either we get rid of your table. If we do contact you and and within fifteen minutes, you can say, "I oh, will be in another like twenty minutes or what." All right, we'll, we'll, but but you know, like. At a place like Dal Silvano or Cipriani, one of those places, it, it's very, it's very slim to none. Like you have a very short window. How did people before had cell phones like call into a place? Just get off the taxi and just go run to a payphone and call in, say you're late. Like how you, how would you communicate? Well, you're running late. Well, I, back I'm, in the day, I'm happy to say, <laughs> I'm happy to say that when I worked at a restaurant, they had cell phones. It's <laughs> <laughs> so, so like Clark. Hey, I I'm late. A question you know, ask my dad phone. then. <laughs> I need to ask my dad that one. He's going to tell me to F off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Number two, way to get kicked out. Taking photos inside. This in, this includes bathroom selfies. Being rude and appropriate to our team, especially Tony. That's funny. They put a name on there. Yeah. <laughs> Where the hell is Tony? Is. Yeah. Hey, Tony. Hey, don't mess with Tony. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like coming here and saying don't mess with Kenny. <laughs> Stealing from or vandalizing the restaurant. Touching the memorabilia. Thinking about Or thinking about touching the memorabilia. Lying about it being your birthday. I mean, that's kind of, I mean, I, I mean, sometimes you celebrate your birthday on a Wednesday or the birthday's on a Wednesday, you celebrate it on a Saturday when you have family, you know? Well, it depends on the place too. I used to go to this place called Pana 2, yeah. an Indian restaurant on uh, First Avenue between 4th and 5th. And uh, it'd go up, it was like a fire hazard. It was a really tiny spot. Um, <laughs> and, but when, they, when there was your birthday, they would blast this music and it was hysterical. And so, like, I, I get that, you know, like you fake it. Yeah, the whole production. Well. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, number seven is canceling a reservation more than thrice. We're we're, lead, we're reading this ten top ten list of different things that this restaurant has get kicked out or never return. Uh, becoming dangerously intoxicated. I mean, that should be. Oh yeah, of course. Do you ever have customers like that where you just like never again? Yeah. Well. You had, off, you had, off the record you had you had really wealthy customers come in there so if they got like faced you know it was like all right well you'd be mindful the next time but i did have one situation that had these three tourists from france that came by had a new bartender actually i kind of promoted him to be bartender and server and uh this guy got so drunk he was he said he went back to tip a, 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 a drink and he kept out he fell backwards he was so the guy was so drunk he just Fell back, fell back just drinking so yeah that's you yeah, always have to be careful for someone who's intoxicated like that that's crazy <laughs> number nine requesting a free meal and number 10 kissing the chef without her consent so some of these are just a little bit out yeah there. that's yeah they're kind of silly but you know that's their list and they're in the new york post and now you can take photos there so this is it was called the frog yeah the frog club in the west village huh 
Let's <laughs> let's let's look up their um their Google review really quick. What do you think they're rated? Oh man, they probably have a good rating. I'll be honest with you. Four six, four seven. <laughs> You're not even in the, in the right number. Wow. Did you see that? <laughs> was it a three? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was a uh, three four. Yeah, so this is all for publicity. Three point four. Gotcha. Not like Google. I mean, come on. Three point four is pretty bad. Yeah. I, I, I see I know dollar pizza places that are higher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is oh. And it's Jeff Bezos' favorite place? He, or, he dines or, there, apparently. He, okay. Wow. Let's let's look at one nasty review. Let's just see some of the reviews. One positive, one bad one. I'm just curious. Okay. Frog Club is a restaurant after my analog heart. There is something like revealing and rebelli rebellious in a place that takes their no-photo policy seriously while it may seem like a gimmick. The result is deliciously relaxing. I visited for the first time. I, okay. For a special treat, the chef brought out a beautiful candlelit dessert under a paper chef's hat resembling a glowing hot air balloon i think that the staff enough for wonderful uh, whatever i think they work there there's too much details yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i can barely remember what i had for lunch yesterday dave asked me how's your sunday i didn't go into that much detail that's funny all right let's go for a bad review now exclusivity does not mean good went on our anniversary and booked through their convoluted email system during booking i shared that we had already a deadly peanut tree allery. Was there any of our, oh, this is a long, detailed one. We had drinks. Somehow they were out of ingredients for the signature cocktail. Anyways, yeah, yeah. I think this is like a hit or miss place. <laughs> wow, really? Place is not good. I felt sick after eating there. So if you feel sick after eating at a place, always look at the front window to see when the last time they had their health grade updated. You should always be eating at a place with an A. Yeah. And if you aren't sure and you do feel sick, I would go look it up online. You can look up any restaurant, abcfoodgrades.org, type it in on Google, and you can look up that restaurant. So I challenge anyone that's out there watching this, look up some of the places you've been eating recently and just check out and see how sanitary is it inside. Because most likely, if you're not feeling good or sick after you eat at a place, you probably got a little food poisoning from either contamination from using the same knife or cutting the pineapple and the chicken. Yeah, or or not washing, <laughs> or someone not washing their hands. You know, after the you know after they go to the bathroom, yep. and, and things like that happen, and people get sick. Yep. So <laughs> definitely look it up. Look at some of the places that you eat, and some guy just walked by in a Winnie the Pooh onesie. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How many more days till Halloween? We're, we're still like a couple of weeks out, right? So, yeah. So we're we're like twenty four days. Wow, Halloween, okay. so yeah. a little over three weeks. I don't know if that guy lost a bet or what, but he's just walking down <laughs> Queens Boulevard with a... Is that Winnie the Pooh or is that Tiger? I think it was Tigger. Tigger? Yeah, yeah, Tigger. <laughs> this guy's sprinting looks like Richard Simmons just ran by. Yeah, well, that guy, yeah. He's um, he's very... He usually runs with his shirt off. <laughs> and every time, I think, oh, my God, this guy's coming again. You see, like, his, he's, you know, like, his chest bouncing up and down. He's like he's sprinting for the subway or trying to get on the bus before he leaves. <laughs> that guy's like full sprint. All right. If you're curious, all right. What time? If you're curious, maybe I'll pull some of that that, that footage yeah, off. We so, have to. <laughs> I think I have to. The Tigger walking by, like the guy. I saw him go by the first time. Wait, I didn't just see that. I'm thinking of that, and then he's walked by. So right, right around 11:30, 30, 11:32. Let me see if I can pull it real quick. Anyways, let's go into the next thing, which are the bike lanes. So as we're looking outside the window here, we have an updated bike lane. It's been a lot of controversy to a lot of customers that come in. Um, I'd say 90% of the customers that come in don't like it at all. And 10% say they like it. We like bike lanes. We, we're bikers ourselves. Yeah. But for outside, tell us your uh, thoughts on the new updated Queens Boulevard bike lane. That's right outside the curb. But then there's parking on the other side of the bike lane, which makes it a whole convoluted, convoluted system out here. You know, they started that uh, a couple years ago, closer to where I live, which is like 10 blocks away. And they took away a lot of parking spaces and they added these bike lanes and it's just so cockamamie. Yeah. I don't know what they're thinking. It's crazy. I mean, I, 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 you know, like I need to document this because it's just like, it makes no sense. And it takes away all the parking city bikes have kind of taken over like every other corner. So less parking. Um, so, all right. So that's the neighborhood. But when you're on the street, Queens Boulevard is a main artery that flows throughout the entire length of Queens. Um, but there's two other bike lanes that are parallel to Queens Boulevard. So we have a lot of bike lanes and, and why are they it's taking safer. on the street on yep. a, such a big, 
a, a congested street like this. It's 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 insane. Now look, I I ride the bike. I have my bikes in the back, and I love riding my bike. But I would never ride on Queens Boulevard. I mean, the people that do, you know, it's kind of dangerous. But now they can ride it and do whatever they want to do. But they took away a, a, um, a lane, and they took away seven, five parking spots in front of my spot, and that's huge. So now you have people double parking uh, or parking where they shouldn't be parking. It's really complicated. Why screw up such a like a, a standard system? Yep. Like the way we've had it for such a long period of time. They say if it's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah. And and they're they're really screwing things up big, yep. big time. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy because you, you think it's meant to be for safer and more visibility. But if you go out in Queens Boulevard here, you're trying to dodge delivery trucks coming to restaurants up and down the boulevard. You're trying to dodge the MTA buses that are coming in and out. You're trying to dodge, like you said, the, the double parking that people are doing. So there's a lot of things you're trying to navigate. But also, people are turning right off of Queens Boulevard now. They have to go through two lanes and make sure they don't They have to you. go so wide. It's so crazy. Wide. And they, they say it's for more visibility when you're making that turn, but at night there's it, it, people walking like i feel like it's more dangerous for pedestrians though it's very dangerous as a matter of fact there was a car accident uh just yesterday uh right on the corner of right of 43rd street and queens boulevard and um all right so what happens <coughs> pardon me so what happens is you it's the sidewalk the uh the bike lane and then parking so mm -hmm. people and this happened to me today people they dart from they're parking to the sidewalk, but they run in front of the bike. So it's even more dangerous for a bike rider. Yeah, Seriously. It is. And uh, because and you have pedestrian to, and a pedestrian too. So it's just, it's making things more complicated. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more injuries and, you know, hopefully, hopefully not, but this is not going to make anything any easier for bike riders. It's going to make it more complicated. It's going to make it more hectic and and unsafe for people, and it makes no sense. And I did read somewhere where I think the one of the former mayors, and don't quote me on this one, but I think it's Mayor Bloomberg wanted to make it a car-free New York City. Yeah, that's right. That I remember true? hearing that. Yeah, sure. Okay. So I read that. I wasn't dreaming. And apparently, now that you said that, it took away. You said five spots out here. Yeah. So when that takes away five spots outside your business, what do you think people are doing? They're driving around. There's more traffic. There's more congestion now because they can't find a spot here so that puts more people on the street yeah they had those empty spots people can just easily park so it's it's creating a lot more congestion and queens boulevard looks even more busy after you know every night looks like a friday night now when you look outside because friday night usually is the most busy like between three and five but yeah looks even busier now on monday tuesday wednesday every day looks like it's it's a friday night outside yeah it's it's crazy and uh, i mean we do have parking underneath the seven train mm -hmm. but still that's not enough so, I mean, if people, I know when I used to go to Manhattan, I used to drive in Manhattan. If I couldn't find a parking space on the street, I don't want to park in a, in a lot. I mean, there's no lots here, so you can't do that here. But after being, um, uh, uh, going through at the scenario, looking for a parking spot, not finding a parking spot, you're like, all right, well, I'm not going to go in the city anymore. I'm yep. going to drive somewhere else. I'm yep. going to go somewhere else. So, you know, like, I hope that that doesn't happen here. But this is a destination for some people that want to try our pizza. If they drive here, they're going to be out of, shit out of luck, and they're going to be pissed. So it's just it, it it's chalk it up for some idiots in the city, you know, going through Mayor Bloomberg's uh, plan, which a which twenty is year the, outdated plan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like this, you know, like all the parking that you have. I mean, you have that issue too. Yeah. So this recently in Forest Hills, they did the same thing. One hundred and eighth Street, they put NYPD barrier blocks on every corner. And that took away two spots on each corner. So now it's, like I said, it's more traffic, more congestion because people are coming home from work and they're circling the block because those two spots on each block, they all add up all the way down the all the way down 108th Street. So it's two, plus four, plus six. There's 10 spots now. Those people usually have cars. They're now circling around the area. So this creates way more traffic, I feel like. And if they do want to get away, get away of people driving, then make a plan for it. Don't just start taking away parking. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just crazy to think that. It's just, you're causing more traffic, more CO2 in the in the in the air, emissions, all that kind of stuff. You're trying to alleviate that, but you're making it worse because more people are staying on the road longer. Yeah, they're, they're idling. They're waiting for a parking space. Exactly. What are they doing? You know, they're they're just, they're just going through, you know, all, all of the emissions. So yep. It's crazy. And the one nice thing that they did, so I took a picture on the way here as I was walking. They're actually covering these barriers now, so now they actually look, they actually look, um, give it a facelift. So oh, the Department nice. of Transportation's out there covering these barriers. That's what they look like now. It's cute. 
Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> the whole spot's taken. You see that from there all the way to there. And it's there and then at the front of the same street. And that's it's, it's, it's crazy. Bad. It's bad. So welcome to today's podcast. We're at Philomena's Pizza live in Sunnyside, Queens. This is a more of a residential neighborhood. So to see this kind of parking done like this makes it seem more like Manhattan, which is not what this area is over here. Yeah, this is a nice community and uh, we have a lot of parks, a lot of families. So and so there's a lot of cars. Yeah. It's not fair. And we're going to continue on with the podcast. So thanks everyone for watching. Make sure you follow for more for our pages, Don Carroll Pizza Guy, NYC underscore KB. And we're live at Philomena. So come check us out if you haven't been over here yet. Next thing we're going to talk about, and I've been learning a lot about this in the news from Dave, is the P. Diddy scandal going on. So P. Diddy is in jail here in New York over in Brooklyn. Update us and give us a quick little rundown of the key players that are involved in this whole P. Diddy um what kind of word should i use to describe this and that it can't even be a fiasco it, 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 it's a, a calamity it's 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 escapade it's 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 a, it's a horror story i'll be honest horror story yeah i mean like what he's give us some of the key players because I, I was you were telling me about all these people are connected here 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 and i was kind of mind blown looked it up and i was like wow he's right but dave knows all the inside information and he's been staying up late making more pizza for everybody, more dough, but also listen to the P. Diddy scandal. So give us that information, this horror story. I can't get enough information <laughs> for all this to make sense of it. It's just, it's just, it's crazy because of the fact that P. Diddy really took advantage of a lot of people and he did a lot of bad things, a lot of people. And it's, 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 it's sad because when you have a person has so much power like that, you can get away with a lot until shit hits a fan and, and like it did to him and thank god because no no one's no one's gonna from this point on no one's gonna get hurt from 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 someone like this and hopefully it'll give other people an idea not to do these things because it's horrible but yeah. anyway give us some of the key players this is our p diddy insider right here on the podcast so give us some of the key players that maybe some names people didn't think they were involved but they are well okay so look these parties they were sex parties and a lot of these A-listers, like double A-listers, were buddy buddy with each other, to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and you and you see, like, all right, so you, so Rick Ross, uh, Kanye West was in there at, or earlier in the time. Now he, he kind of like kind of distanced himself away from from P Diddy. Um, uh, Will Smith was on the receiving end. You had a lot of people that were just at these parties, going, you know, having sex with one another. And look, it's alleged, but I mean, they have video now to prove all this stuff. Wow. And uh, I mean, wouldn't you want to see some of that stuff? I mean, that would be, if you put that in the movie, it would, it would like millions of people would see that. Yep. Cause it's just, it's, it's crazy. But um, so yeah, you have a lot of key players, Jay-Z, Beyonce, they have a big role in this. Um, but not only that, I think there was like a threesome going on with Beyonce and P Diddy and Jay-Z. And it's just like now it kind of makes sense when you know when, when Will Smith got so crazy with with his wife during the Oscars, um, their lives are completely different from ours. They live on a different planet. They think so differently from one another uh, from us. And you know it's like they are they almost like not monsters, but they're they're just like they're these different type of beings. Yeah. Exploiting people that are vulnerable. Yeah. Especially the underage alleged claims that have been listed out there in the news. So these parties, he, they would bring in dancers and the, then they would have these drinks. They would have like a, a punch bowl for or whatever drinks for for the dancers and drinks for the the people that are that are visiting oh, yeah. and having the fun. So most of those drinks were spiked. So after they'd have a drink. They would kind of get loose and then they would start being taken advantage of. And that was, that's the whole thing. Wow. And you have in, you know, people that are doing things that they didn't think they were going to do when they first walked through the door at a P Diddy show. I mean, a, a, a P Diddy party, P Diddy party. But, uh, <laughs> but apparently uh, this is what's been going on for, for a long, long time. And at his house and was a California uh, he has uh, an underground lake. Yeah, tell us about that. Yeah, under these uh, like this this, this uh, underground tunnels that lead to another house and or or another room, and they can't get into these rooms. But I can't even imagine what they were going on. This is like so separate from the rest of the world. This this little area that they have. Who knows what the hell was going on over there? Wow. And you know, like uh, uh, Usher. Uh, uh, 
Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so everyone was trying to protect Justin Bieber, and um, and uh, they were trying to keep him away from P Diddy. So Usher was grooming Bieber to uh, to eventually come to the party, which eventually he did. So they were really taking advantage of, of young kids, young young people. That's sad. And, which it's really sad. I mean, now look at Justin Bieber, and um, and, and you see the repercussions where. Uh, he was standing up for Billy Eilish, who, who uh, you know, he was saying the industry is so tough. It's so it's so hard on young kids, young people. You know, you know, just stay clear, stay away from you know, from these certain other people. And but but the thing about P Diddy is uh, he he's now coming out and he's he's kind of blaming a like Clive Davis. This is like this is this has been going on for a long time, apparently. Yep. Where you know. The, the record producers before them and before them, they were all doing these sort of things and everyone kept, was hush hush about it. But now everything's starting to come out because I mean, cause I guess P Diddy went to a no, totally different level with all this stuff. Yep. You pissed somebody off, I guess. Right. Yeah. Like, his, What's your prediction for where this goes forward? Do you think number one, it will go to court and a lot more information will come out or do you think it will kind of disappear? Like the, what's that one guy's Epstein, the Epstein Island guy. Yeah, I yeah, it'll disappear like Epstein did, where somebody just went to <laughs> Brooklyn jail, two security guards were sleeping, and security footage wasn't working. Is all of a sudden ended up <laughs> committing suicide or unalived himself. Well, what's your prediction for the P Diddy scandal? So, so um, that scenario, there were big, big, big politicians, leaders, the world leaders, and they had to get rid of him, Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah. So, so, so. Uh, but it's also the scenario with, with uh, P. Diddy, too. I mean, a lot of A-listers, a lot of big, powerful people that are involved with this, um, uh, you know, don't want to get their names uh, published or, or, or out there. So I think it's going to be this similar scenario with him. Yeah. They'll bring him to court. They'll, they'll, they'll have uh, people kind of testify against him. Uh, and a lot of victims will come out. And a lot of victims are pouring out. It's crazy how many people. But, I mean... There's some people that are kind of jumping on the bandwagon, kind of repeating the same story. But I'm sure a lot of people went through this this horror story, yeah, and went to his party and and, and got caught up in this. And uh, so, so I think I think he's going to get uh, taken out in jail, wow. like, like Epstein. Yeah. He, he will never see the light of day outside of jail. He's going to die in jail, and they'll, they'll probably take him out sooner than later. Wow. But but he's going to go to jail. He's it, there's I mean he's going to go to um, court. He'll have a stay in court. And what you'll hear from that, it's just going to be bombshell, a bombshell after bombshell. I mean, you're talking about Will Smith, Jay Z, Kanye West, and all the people that are so. And look, Ellen DeGeneres is going to those parties too. So there's a lot of people that are involved with this. Yep. It, it's huge. It's such a big story. Wow. Big information right there. So if you haven't really followed what's going on, this is our insider. So he gives me <laughs> updates every day when I come to work about you hear who's involved next with the P Diddy thing. So oh wait a minute, we didn't even talk about Tupac and how oh, yeah. he put a hit on Tupac, and that's how powerful the guy was. And, wow. and and they keep on saying about Biggie, but I don't understand why he would put a hit on his own boy. Yeah, but um, but man, there's some really great like raps that Tupac's coming out after Puffy, and he's like you know he's rapping about him, talking to him, you know, calling him out and stuff like that. And sadly, you know, a couple of months later, he's he's taken out of himself. So. In Las Vegas, they thought it was the LAPD that took him down. There's only a whole bunch of rumors on the on what's his name, uh, Tupac. The thing he's still alive, you know, kind of like the whole Elvis. Yeah, thing, yeah, like, yeah. He's hanging out somewhere. Yeah, but no, he, he's 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 yeah. not here. Crazy information, and for all the victims out there, like, do you think, you know, with this whole suit going on, like, will they ever see? I mean. You hope that they get to share, share their story, number one, and have it come out there so people can hear what happened. But number two, do you think they'll ever get any kind of compensation for, you know, what happened with them? I'm sure he's going to have a lot to, to shell out. I'm sure. He, I'm sure that there are a lot of victims are going to get paid out. Um, I, I don't know how long it'll go for before he gets he gets killed in jail, but um, but I, I'm hopefully a lot of victims will get paid out. But 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 he's he's going to die in jail. Mm -hmm. And uh, he'll never see the light of day outside of jail. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So you, you before, if you weren't watching any, any stuff 
hear that's happened with P. Diddy before he turned himself in. He was walking around New York City. He was up in uh, Central Park. He was in Washington Square Park. That video of him in Washington Central Park. Do you yeah. see the, ang- the anxiety yeah. on his face? The yeah, guy is just there. Going- like knowing it's his last day out in the park. Yeah. That's scary. He that's knows. Sad. He knows that he is going to jail. But he didn't realize he was not going to come out. He thought he was going to be get released on bail, like a million dollar bail. And the judge is like, no. Yeah. You cannot. You <laughs> this is a monopoly. I got I'm the I'm the mustache dude. You know, you can't leave jail. He's staying right there. Yeah. Seeing those videos of him and like, wow, like this is somebody that's probably thinking they're never gonna see the light of day again, you yeah. know, and what, what could happen, like you know, somebody can just come into the jail, someone powerful that has a lot of money, talk to the security guard. Here, here's a million dollars. You'll never have to work again or something. Yeah. Let me in. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and, and he paid someone a million dollars to to take out uh, to, uh, Tupac. So, yeah. <laughs> again, money goes a long way. Power goes a long way. Yep. So, I don't know. Stay tuned to what's going to happen oh, next. Man. We'll, we'll be updating you. Time. <laughs> See what happens within a week. But seriously, sorry for all the uh, the people that are victims in this whole case and hoping that you get to share your story to someone that is going to take care of it and hopefully never have to go through any kind of that situation like that again. Yeah, we, 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 we our hearts are with you. And, and if you want to talk about it, you can talk with us. Yeah. Next thing we're going to talk about, moving right into MLB playoffs. What an exciting MLB playoffs we've had so far. The Mets are on fire. You know, let's go Mets. They've oh had, my God. they've won some of the best games of their whole franchise in the yeah. past week. Like some exciting games, a game against Atlanta where they clinched. And then the game against Milwaukee where they walked off with Pete Alonzo's historic home run. Wow. And the other day was almost uh, another historic comeback. They took the lead again in the ninth only to lose. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, they, they are on a mission. They're on fire. It's great to see it. And you know what? I, I don't know. If there's so there's four, uh, uh, games that are being played. I think the Mets, they're 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 putting on the best baseball show ever, 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 ever that we've ever seen from this team. It's amazing. And tell the viewers what we were talking about the other day, just about the adrenaline that they have right now and how that's hard, like lightning in a bottle. Yeah, you you can't you you can't manufacture that. You can't produce that um, that adrenaline that that they get. But uh, but they have lightning in a bottle. They have such an amazing collective energy right now and they're just they're just they're i feel like they're unstoppable i feel like they're going to take it all the way to the world series yeah because this is a team that's been fighting for that playoff spot since early september and we talk about this a lot and with momentum like philly clinched back in july so they've been kind of on cruise control yeah and it's hard to reignite that flame inside yeah they're not as hungry as the mets not as hungry, hungry. When, when you're hungry night after night like you can't just Pick up and like, oh, game three. Now we're gonna turn it on. Like, oh, come you, on, let's go get the Mets. Yeah. No, no, man, the Mets are on fire. Try yep. to get them. Yep, and they're already like six feet ahead. So let's go over the playoff picture really quick. We have the Detroit Tigers versus Cleveland. Who do you think's gonna win that game or that series? Detroit and Cleveland. Cleveland's I, already up one nothing. I I think the Tigers. They have a like they have a good momentum, and I love their manager. Okay, so you got AJ Hinch and the Tigers advancing. Yeah, yeah. Kansas City's got a one nothing lead against the Yankees. The Yankees are like the second fiddle right now. No one's really talking about the Yankees because the Mets have really taken over New York City. <laughs> it's so, like, it's so and the true. energy of coming into the pizzeria here in Queens, everyone's got their Mets memorabilia on, hat. All these people that have been closet Mets fans are now like you see their jerseys, their hats. It's it's really cool to see. It's so for sure. You see like like like, like the Christmas gifts and birthday gifts. People <laughs> have, these beautiful hats are just peering out of nowhere now. I'm like, wow, that's a nice hat. And you yep. know, like I know where they got them from. Yep. And they took it out of their closet. I'm gonna support my team the home team of yep. course. they're coming in here i'm like oh i didn't even know you're a mets fan <laughs> but yeah <laughs> so Ro- royals yankees who's your team i gotta your take team? the yankees okay, I, so. although the royals are, are are pretty hot too we know we know you'll hear it from somebody on instagram we've got people messaging dave saying he's uh, not really a mets fan uh, so we got some people that know dave og dave <laughs> so we got the tigers versus the yankees in the alcs mets phillies easy pick here oh right? my gosh yeah the phillies <laughs> <laughs> the Mets, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Mets. I'm going with the Mets. San Diego versus LA. This series is tied 1 1 oh, last man. night. San Diego put a little whooping down on Jack Flaherty and the Dodgers. Yeah. I, I, I'm going with uh, San Diego. Okay. So we got San Diego, New York. Yeah. Sorry, I cut you off. We're going to say. No, no. I, 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 lo- I love their energy. And, you know, they're, it's their payroll, the Dodgers payroll. It's, it's bonkers. And and the Padres, they they they're gonna they're gonna whoop their ass. Good. 
I'm, I'm all for it. I, I like the I like the underdog, especially in the playoffs right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they man, they they're, they're 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 on fire. I love when David slays Goliath. So we <laughs> we go back over to the ALCS where Dave has the Tigers versus the Yankees in the ALCS. Who do you think's in advance? Yankees. I gotta go with the Yankees. So okay. it might be a Subway series. You never know. So Yankees are in the World Series. The Mets and Padres. Think the Mets have a chance to beat the Padres? Yes. The Mets could go all the way. Yeah, once they get past Philly, it's basically yeah. this is this is the huge series. Yeah. And a funny stat that we talked about the other day, every team that, that's beat the Brewers in the playoffs in the last 20 years has made it to the World Series. <laughs> Isn't that wow. crazy? Well, I believe it. And like out of those 15 teams, 12 have won. Wow. So oh all God. those teams that have made it have won 12 out of the 15. It's a crazy number. I love it. And only three have lost, but they've all made it to the World Series. Wow. You know, the, the great thing is the management, the Mets management didn't see this coming at the beginning of the year. They kind of wrote this year off. Yeah, we did. Next too. year, we're going to be contending. You know, this year, we're <laughs> kind of rebuilding. I know. Yeah, I think everybody did. So, so I mean, you have one or two key players, you know, Lindor. Hey, Lindor, by the way. Yep. By the Francisco way. Lindor, how you doing? <laughs> I got something for you. I made your pizza. Come and try it. It is delicious. It's delicious. Yes. Tommy comes in. Hey, Dave, the Pomodoro pizza is good, but the Lindor is better. It's even, it's even better than the Pomodoro. It's a great pie. So Tell everybody on. what's on it. All right. So the Lindor is uh, mushrooms, olives, uh, Calabrian chilies. Delicious. Great. A nice amount of sauce. And then we topped off with um, fior de latte, basil, and shaved Parmesan. It's an amazing pie. It's great. Lindor, MVP in my heart. The, the pie is an MVP too. So we have that pie, but why did you name it that? Give us a little context because a lot of people were saying this Lindor. It's been on the menu before I was even working here. Yeah. That's one of the first things I tried, but then it came off right after that. But tell us a little bit why it's named that because no one really knows that. It's okay. not just because of the hype right now. It's been like that before a while now. Yeah. So uh, I guess it was during the pandemic when they signed the Lindor. It was spring training. My friend texted me. Hey, you're watching the spring training game? I was like, yeah, I'm watching it. He goes, if, did you see the interview? I said, no. He goes, wind it back. See what he says. So Lindor says, and he didn't even make it to this, this New York yet. So he was in, in, uh, um, in Florida during spring training. And he's like, I can't wait to go to New York to try the pizza. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So I came up for this, with this pizza for him. And I was like, this is a great pie because I love Calabrian chilies. And I, I just like the flavors of, of uh, olives. And it's something really simple. with Just like you know, a nice amount of fior de latte and basil. So, uh, so I made this pie for him, and I put it out there, and you know, it's it's a nice pie. I, ideally, I would love for him to come have it, and I, I guess I took it off the menu because it was actually a pain in the ass to make. <laughs> because I got like changing my gloves, I had the the Calabrian chilies. I, I didn't bake it off uh, on the pie. Now I do it just to save an extra step. But uh, but yeah, it's a great pie. Awesome, and hopefully get Frank Francisco Lindor in here and his wife Katia Lindor. I think that's how you pronounce her name, but Katia. we've been going after Katia Lindor as well. So that's me. I'm tagging you, Katia. So hopefully you get into Philomena's. It's easy on the way to on the way to City Field. And every Mets fan that's going to the game on Wednesday, hopefully they don't. Oh, they're gonna have to play Wednesday now. Yeah, they're playing Wednesday. Awesome. Oh, yeah. So every Mets fan that's gonna go to the game on Wednesday, stop by the seven line. You're gonna be open at 12 on Wednesday. Yep. So I'm not sure what time the game is yet. They haven't announced the game time, but it's probably going to be after four for sure. But any Mets fan that's coming along the seventh train, we're right off the stop at 40th Street, or maybe after the game, come by and try some of the pizza. And hopefully there's some Lindor slices left. And if not, we'll make you we'll make pie. It Don't worry. Don't yeah. worry. You come, I'll make it free. It's okay. Yep. So let's fill this place up. Let's fill City Field up. Hopefully there's no uh, no empty seats at City Field, oh, as man. Brandon Nimmo Mets. said the last week of the season. And let's let's beat their ass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially with Phillies. <laughs> it feels good. Uh, next thing we're going to talk about, I think the last thing before we get started, because you have to, what time is uh, our, the he, next guy coming in? He is coming in soon. Okay. So. Uh, jersey sales. So we talked about this one. Top 10 jersey sales. Name five of the top 10 jersey sales in MLB. See if you can name them. All right. Okay. All right. So, so uh, okay. Um, Shoei Otani. I mean, the, the guy's Easy, an international yep. star. Um, uh just got whited out here with a white truck yeah. outside, like getting blinded, yeah. like like we're on our way to heaven. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. No, yeah. wait. There it goes. <laughs> um, all right. So uh Judge, Aaron Judge. Yep. Um it's two. 
Who did I say? I, all right, so uh, Tani Judge. Oh, Tani Judge. Um, so Soto has to be there. Yep. Uh, so superstars. We're just talking about superstars. That's three. You know. So okay. All right. So how many do I have to get? Five. Five out of ten. Okay. Um, if you get more, be great. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Bryce Harper's a big star. That's four. Four. Okay. If I can count. Um, Need one more. Uh, Bogarts. Eh. Uh, okay. Um, big star, big star. Uh, Mookie Betts. Mookie Betts. That's five. All right. Can you go? Any, can you get any more? Uh, uh, Soto. Uh, Bryce Harper. Did yeah, I say that? Yeah, you said him. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to drink Kenny. <laughs> yeah, that's seven. No, I'm just kidding. That's six. Uh, all right. I'm good. So Arenado from the Cardinals, he's number 10. Lindor. Oh. <laughs> Lindor's on there. Ronald Acuna Jr. He's kind of he kind of got hurt. So he kind of yeah. disappeared a little bit. Good. His brother's taking this uh his uh fire for Yeah, him. he is. And then there's two more. I think I'm missing those. I don't remember. Let us know in the chat down below if you made it this far. Let us know the two guys we're missing down below. We'll let you guys fill that in. Unless we can find it here real quick. <laughs> Two more. Let's see. Hold on. I'm going to find it. And then last question. Where do you want to go to next in New York City? Oh, you know what? I, I, I love... Neighborhood Spotlight. All right. Well, I, I love um, I love the Brooklyn Bridge. I love the Williamsburg Bridge. So Brooklyn Heights. It's a beautiful... It's like, for me, it's like Emerald City. Because you see, like you're surrounded by Lower Manhattan, all the beautiful buildings and all the lights and all that stuff. I love walking through Brooklyn Heights. How about you, Kenny? Where would you like to go to? Next, see? somewhere over in Brooklyn, I, I would say um, either Diker Heights or Red Hook. I've never really been over there that far. So we're trying to get out that way. And there's a place I want to try a little pizzeria over there. Crispy Pizza, I've been watching them on Instagram. They do a really good job yeah. with their social media. So that. That brings people in, and I want to go check it out and see if the pizza is good, and for sure, and see what it's like over there, and just to walk around because I don't, I, I'm always everywhere in Queens, but I want to go somewhere over in Brooklyn and see yeah. what they got over there. Yeah, it's 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 a nice little commute too, so be sure you uh, walk around over there because yeah. it's it's <laughs> get your money's worth. It can kill some time. Yeah, MLB jersey sales. This will be our last thing. We're just trying to make sure we get it. All right, here we go. Tommy. I just had the damn list yesterday. Where'd it go? <laughs> I'm still trying to think. Lindor, yeah. Lindor. Oh, here we go. Okay, number one, Otani. Number two, Bryce Harper. Number three, Aaron Judge. Number four, Mookie Betts. Number five, Francisco Lindor. Six, Ronald Lacuna. Seven, Jose or sorry, Juan Soto, eight, Jose Altuve. That's one we missed. Yeah. Nine, Fernando Tatis Jr. Oh my God. How did I forget that guy? I know. That guy is awesome. And number 10, Nolan Arenado. So those are the top 10 jersey sales in MLB. Wow. But I'm sure Otani kind of like catapulted away from everyone else. Oh yeah, big time. They said that, yeah, it, like the distance between one and two is. It's crazy. Yeah, I can't imagine. Look, you have a whole other country yeah. <laughs> that's supporting you. Whole world brand. Yeah. That you have. And any other things we missed today? We'll talk about Mayor Adams next time and see if he's still in office. But we're, we had that on the docket. But I think the P. Diddy stuff was more. Yeah, that, that's that. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, there's a lot to that. Yeah, a but lot our, to unpack. But all right, let's, all right. So, Kenny, we usually do this uh, every episode. Uh, so, tell me, um, name a celebrity. Ooh, that now you got uh, me on the spot. You, you would like to 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 meet celebrity that I would like to meet. It's, it's got to be someone with the Mets or someone involved with the Mets. Hmm. Talk about Francisco Lindor trying to get him in here. But I would like to see Pete Alonzo come in here. Wow. Wow. So he's we have been a lot on fire. to talk about. It. Yeah. 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 He's been on fire. And I think may, may possibly naming something after him if he continues this amazing stretch in the playoffs. If we get to the World Series, maybe naming something like the Polar Bear Slice or something cool like that because that's his nickname. So getting Pete Alonzo to come to Philomena's 40th Street, 4116 Queens Boulevard. We know Pete Alonzo loves New York City. He loves 
supporting Queens. Some come out to Filomena's Pizza. I don't know. I've seen you over at Parkside, right down the street over there in Corona. So I, I know you like to go out and try some food. So come over here to Filomena's Pizza. I'll name a pizza after you, PD, Barry. Let's go. go. Come on. So, um, but uh, PD Pizza. PD Pizzas. P, you know, there was a place in Brooklyn called Pizza. Oh, wow. Pete, P E T E Z A A. And Za? Yeah. I don't know if that is a pizza or is it actually something else they're selling? No, they're selling pizza. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but it would be great to have uh, Alonzo here. And, and, and especially if the Mets re sign him, which I, I think they're going to do now. You know, like, how could you turn that guy away? Yeah, at this point, he's been a face of the franchise. He's got one of the most iconic home runs in franchise history. You know, he's, he looks good in a Mets jersey. You know, you can't imagine him playing somewhere else. And exactly. Whatever you can work out, hopefully you can work it out and get some brand deals on the side and you'd be good. Yeah. You know, yeah. 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 You get a hometown discount. It's okay. Yeah. And what about you? What celebrity would you like to see coming to Philomena's? Oh, man. You know what I want to see? 50 Cent. No way. We got a lot. Yeah. Wow. He's been posting a lot of Diddy stuff, like a lot of funny yeah. cat. Like, so, so 50 Cent him. is is producing a documentary about p diddy what for netflix yeah so he's like got good a or lot bad of, what's that good or bad it's going to be great because we're going to have more insight uh, about wow. what the because they, a lot of a lot of celebrities know what's what's been going down they just can't say anything wow. because because they're afraid for retribution or getting you know from getting f you know met, you know crossed out why does 50 cent want any part of this though because they don't like each other Wow. Yeah. So there, there's a big animosity towards one another. And uh, and uh, 50 Cent sees what kind of a piece of shit, you know. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say it like that. But but but, <laughs> but, 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 but sees P. Diddy for who he really is, you yeah. know, and uh, him being a, just a bastard. But uh, yeah. So 50 Cent, he's from Queens. Yep. He's Jamaica not that far Queens. away. <clears throat> I'm not going to make a pizza after you, though. I, I have so many pizzas I, I can name after people. We can. I think if he comes in, I think we can. Yeah, yeah, we'll 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 charge a slice like fifty, like it'd be like fifty cents, like it's something like six fifty. Fifty cent slice. We'll, th we'll have to do something. Okay, something where the slice is like fifty cent involved. <laughs> okay, fifty cent. Yeah. Okay, that'd be funny. All right, all right. Well, okay. So we'll we'll, we'll think we'll about change this. it. We'll, we'll change one of our slice names. Like the Bianca can be like a fifty or something. I mean the fifty. All right. So, we'll, all right. Okay. J. Fitty. J. Fitty. <laughs> Fitty Cent. He's from Jamaica, so we can we can do something with uh, we'll we'll do something cool. We'll, we'll look up some more about Fifty Cent. What we can do. If you guys have any ideas of what we should name a slice after Fifty Cent, let us know in the comments. Well, you know what? I, you know what we could do. We could make a like a big eighteen inch pizza. Yeah. And then we could make it as if it's a cool, like a Fifty Cent piece, and just with the pepperoni, just ran out Fifty Cent. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Like, <laughs> that's good too. But anyway, let us know any any other people that are creative out there. You guys help us a lot with naming stuff. So let us know down below in the comments. And um, that's a great one to bring in. Never thought of that. Fifty Cent. He's from Jamaica, Queens. He was shot here in Jamaica. We're outside of his grandma's house, I believe. There's a really cool movie. They did a really good job of that. Have you ever seen that movie with him? No, no, I haven't. Yeah, the Fifty Cent movie that goes into his life and what happened, how he got shot. You know, mouth was wired. And how he started singing and all that kind of stuff, and really came out to uh, be the rapper that he is today. And wow, I like him. Curtis Jackson's name, right? Yeah, yeah, I like him too. But if you've ever seen him throw out the first pitch, because I think he threw out the first pitch to a Mets game. Yeah, it was terrible. He he can't throw. No, <laughs> <laughs> stick to rapping and producing. Yep. yep. <laughs> yeah, that's whole very interesting. Because I did see a video recently of him posting stuff on his own personal Instagram. It's about Diddy. Yeah, like funny yeah, yeah. meme video, like funny meme pictures, like uh, oh about Jay Z too. So he's ripping Jay Z. Wow. Well, look, I I, I don't blame him. You know, I mean, yeah. there, there's again, there's a, a lot of information about those 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 guys. Crazy. So a lot of bombshell stuff. Hopefully, nothing crazy happens before our next show. But if it does, you know, we'll talk about it. And what else were we gonna say to end the show? Oh, um, just talking about Fifty Cent. I just totally forgot. One more closing remark. Celebrity of the week. Got that. I don't know if Rob was going to say, but <clears throat> great show. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you'd like to add? Uh, Any final recap? You know, 
All right, I, we, we're not going to touch about Mayor Adams, but I just find it so amazing that they really wanted to take out Mayor Adams and P. Diddy in the same week. That is an amazing coincidence, if it's a coincidence at all. Yeah. It's, you know, so there's a lot of stuff that's going down now um, that we're going to hopefully find out more within the next few weeks and stuff. But at least it'll give us a lot to talk about because it's, it's crazy. It yeah. is crazy. You know, our friend John, News Updates for Real on Instagram, uh, he likes to go and unpack all those different coincidences because it's most of the time it's not just a coincidence. Yeah. It's a connection, a real connection. So, yeah, yeah. And that's right, man. I, when I first saw his post about P. Diddy, I was like, oh my God. Like, I, I, I was kind of taken back, but I was like, yeah, that, that's right. Yep. And he has a lot of great information too. So, yeah, good call. Good call. Good call. Cool. Well, thanks everyone for watching this week's show. Make sure you follow for more updates from Don Credible Pizza Guy, NYC underscore KB, both on TikTok, but We'll post this on YouTube so you can listen to the full show. And if you have any suggestions or comments on what we should talk about next, leave them down below. Thank you, everyone. See you next time. See you next time. We need like, like an outro music. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, you know, like, yeah, I really see like those, those, um, those like movie, TV movies with the really crappy like music in the